It appears today as it always has, a landscape of tranquility. But in June 1944, on this narrow coastline, the future of freedom and democracy was at stake. The outcome would depend on the competence, courage, and sacrifice of thousands of embattled men struggling to seize it. Gene Sellers was a star on his high school football and basketball teams and received a scholarship from the University of Arkansas. Before the end of his first year, he left to enlist in the Army. Gene was 21 years old in June 1944. By that spring, the world had been at war for nearly five years. Millions had already died. But on that gray, somber morning, along a narrow front line 120 kilometers long, hundreds of thousands of frightened men would face each other between two worlds, freedom and oppression locked together in conflict. In the early hours of 6 June, as a pathfinder guiding the invasion forces, Gene Sellers leapt into brutal combat. Norval Carter was 32 years of age, a captain in a profession that usually employed younger men. He'd been a small-town family doctor from West Virginia. As a battalion surgeon, he did not have to be in direct fire. But he chose to be there on the front lines to help the wounded. Eleven days after landing at Omaha Beach, Norval had find himself in the surrounding hedgerows near a small Norman town called San Lo. Second Lieutenant Walter Para from Ceres, California, patrolled the skies over the Normandy battlefield, flying cover for the advancing Allied Army, protecting the infantry and armored columns from Hitler's panzers that threatened them. Walter loved to fly. He is most comfortable in the cockpit of his aircraft. He is a born flyer. Walter's P-38, flying low over the small village of Lake Orve, on 15 June 1944, was hit by intense anti-aircraft fire. Walter was 24. Walter's father wrote of his son, spiritually, we feel that he is as close to us, buried in France, as if he was buried here. We are consoled to some extent in knowing he is buried in soil he flew over and helped to win back. Captain Carter also died doing what he cared about most, saving lives. By a small forest near San Lo, he ventured out from the safety of a foxhole to save a wounded GI. In doing so, he was shot and killed by a German sniper. But the soldier he saved lived and eventually returned home. Gene Sellers was one of the first Americans killed on D-Day. He died at a small crossroads near the village of saint con du -Mont. while trying to land and set up beacons for the 101st Airborne paratroopers. He never managed to get out of his parachute. Yeah. 
Today, it's hard to imagine what happened here. It's hard to imagine that this is the final resting place of more than 9,000 young lives. Lives that ended in battles that raged on this beautiful countryside. They can't imagine the horrors of World War in Europe. Madame de Consul, des États-Unis d'Amérique. But they can. They remember their days as young men in uniform, who in absolute excitement and fear prepared themselves for battle. And they most certainly remember those who stayed behind after they pass by to complete their lives. In the late summer afternoon, they now perhaps do not recollect so clearly or perhaps they never did realize that, for a minute in time, the fate of the free world, the entire free world, once rested on their very young shoulders. 